This is KGW News at 11. We begin with breaking news. A bomb threat has forced evacuations in downtown Leavenworth, Washington. There's not a lot of information right now, but Chelan County Emergency Management confirmed the threat in a Facebook post saying a hospital there is on lockdown and asked people to avoid the area. Police always take these things seriously and after Tennessee, probably using even more caution than normal. We'll update you as we learn more on this one. Also tonight, a developing story on the Oregon coast, a young girl's body found in Lincoln County. But who is she and what happened to her? That's still a mystery. And as Catherine Cook reports, this case is disturbing for a number of reasons. In the coastal woods of Lincoln County, little bits of caution tape remain at this rest stop off Highway 18. It's part of the Van Duzer Forest State Scenic Corridor near Otis. It was here on December 10th that police say someone discovered the remains of a little girl. Investigators believe she was between 6 and 10 years old, about 4 feet tall, with long dark hair. Right now, that's all they know about her. We don't have any reports of missing people. We uh, are missing girls that age, um, so, so we don't know. It's hard to fathom that, uh, that, a, that a girl of this age could go missing and, and nobody's missing her. And so that, that's heartbreaking. Oregon State Police Captain Tim Fox says the girl's body had been here for more than 30 days. He says because most children aren't in databases, fingerprints won't help them identify her. To further complicate matters, most children haven't been in school because of the pandemic. The teachers aren't missing these kids because they're not having the contact. Investigators say while the girl's remains were found in Lincoln County, she could have lived anywhere. In time, DNA test results should reveal more clues to her identity, including her ethnicity. But right now, Fox says investigators are depending on the public's help to give them the break they need. You might have wondered, you know, I haven't seen my uh, neighbor's daughter out playing in the uh, the driveway as I used to. Or, you know, I wonder where she is or, you know, th those things. And, and it might be totally uh, innocent. I mean, there are reasons for some of that stuff, but maybe we might get that one tip or that one break that we'll be able to say, you know, this, this is her and identify her and then, then find out what happened. Sharing tips with Oregon State Police is easy. If you have a cell phone, just dial star OSP. That's star 677. Once you share your tip, they'll forward it on to detectives. And remember, no tip is too small. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Thanks, Catherine. Tonight, police have identified the suspected burglar who was shot dead by authorities on the Oregon coast. She's 31-year-old Elena Burns. She's accused of walking into an unlocked home in the Sunset Beach area yesterday and then barricading herself inside. Police say she shot off a gun that she found in the home and eventually climbed onto the roof. An Oregon State trooper shot her when police say she pointed the gun at them. That trooper is now on paid administrative leave. Five teenagers are hurt following a terrible rollover crash in Cowlitz County today. Two had to be life flighted to a Vancouver hospital and are in critical condition. Officials say their car rolled several times and then caught fire. No other details about the crash are being released right now. Now to the pandemic, a new COVID strain has arrived in the United States. The first confirmed case is in Colorado. The patient is a man in his 20s with no known travel history, which would suggest the virus is in his community. He'll recover in isolation until he's cleared. So far, health officials have not identified anyone who's come in close contact with him. This new variant was first reported in the UK and South Africa. Researchers say it may be significantly more contagious. While that new variant is concerning, there is some good news on the COVID front here locally. Today, Oregon reported 713 new cases. That marks the fifth time in the last six days the state has had less than 1,000 new daily cases. That continues a recent downward trend. Keely Chalmers has the latest tonight on our COVID situation. So December was uh, an amazing month. I think people really took seriously the calls to take precautions ahead of Thanksgiving. Multnomah County's top doctor says although we're still seeing hundreds of new COVID cases every day across the Portland metro area, the overall case numbers and hospitalizations are stabilizing. Cases even slightly decreased over the last few weeks. 
rates, which is incredible uh, when you look at the rest of the country. But Dr. Jennifer Vines warns the risk is still high. We are nervous to see what happens in January following, following both Christmas and New Year's. And now confirmation that the highly infectious coronavirus variant has been discovered in Colorado. Well, first of all, we know that, that coronavirus, like other viruses, mutate all the time. Dr. Joe Sullivan is senior health advisor for Oregon Health Authority. He says this latest variant, discovered first in the United Kingdom and now in Colorado, is interesting in that it can spread much faster than the others. The number of cases associated with this, this particular uh, variant is really high, so probably 60 percent right now of all the cases in London and Southern UK are related to this particular variant, which means that it, uh, it suggests that it's spreading faster. But Dr. Sullivan says most experts do not think this new mutation is going to impact the effectiveness of the COVID vaccine. That's because structurally the viruses are the same. The UK is using the Pfizer vaccine right now, so health experts there will be monitoring to see if people who get vaccinated get this variant. But they do not expect that will be the case. Dr. Sullivan says Oregon recently got funding that will allow experts here to do the same. Um, I think that that's still a possibility. I think the thing that people need to remember is there's no evidence that this variant is more dangerous in that it causes more severe disease. In fact, it may cause less severe disease. Uh, we don't know yet. Dr. Sullivan points out because this new form of the virus spreads easier, it's even more important people get vaccinated when they're able to do so. In Portland, Keeley Chalmers, KGW News. The COVID risk levels for five Oregon counties have been downgraded to high risk instead of extreme risk. Those are Clatsop, Coos, Douglas, Lincoln, and Morrow counties. Lake County was also moved from moderate risk to lower risk. Counties will remain at these levels from January 1st through the 14th. The Oregon Health Authority will reassess county risk levels every two weeks based on the most recent coronavirus data. The levels determine when businesses can reopen or offer indoor services. We've posted a list on KGW.com of all the changes you can expect if your county has changed levels. Tonight, some Oregonians who want to see COVID restrictions on businesses eased held a rally in Estacada. They're pushing for places like restaurants and small stores to reopen on January 1st. About 100 people attended, including the mayors of Estacada, Sandy and Molala. As far as the numbers are going up, they're not going up in our restaurants. Our restaurants, bars, businesses in our cities are practicing safe measures. They're cleaning tables. They're making the people practice social distancing. And it's a lot safer than doing any sort of gatherings in our own homes. Clackamas County is still classified in the extreme risk of COVID category by the state. Restaurants can only have outdoor dining while places like gyms must stay closed. Turning to national news for a moment, a shocking development in Louisiana. The 41 year old Republican just elected to Congress has died from COVID complications. His name is Luke Letlow. Letlow was Louisiana's newest Republican member of the U.S. House of Representatives and was set to be sworn into office just days from now. He's the first member or member elect in Congress to die from COVID. He leaves behind his wife and two young children. Back in Oregon now, the DMV says it's still working through its backlog after shutting down at the start of the pandemic. They're helping 25,000 customers a week by appointment only. And those appointments are booked two to three months out. Earlier this year, state lawmakers passed a moratorium that protects drivers from getting a citation for an expired registration or driver's license. But that moratorium expires on December 31st. That's just two days from now. Now at the beginning of the year, Although the moratorium has ended, we do have a grace period in place with law enforcement. And that means that Oregonians will have three months from when their card or their registration expired to get that handled with DMV. So and all together now, let's breathe a little relief. That extra grace period will cover anyone whose license or registration expired after November 1st. You have until April of next year to get them renewed through the DMV. You can head to our website, kgw.com, to learn more about booking your appointment. While humans are fighting the virus, birds in our area are battling a deadly bacteria. This year, cases of salmonella are popping up at a higher rate in small finches called pine siskins. Bird feeders are a common culprit for salmonella spread since birds return to the same spot over and over. 
I will say the best thing to do right now is if you are seeing ill birds at your bird feeder or your neighbors are, take your bird feeders down for a few weeks. That way the birds, you can help the birds social distance that way. Yep, social distancing for birds. Also be sure to clean the feeders regularly with a 10% bleach solution. Those of you with chickens should also be sure to keep them separate from the wild birds. And finally, you should practice good hygiene, especially when handling those feeders, since salmonella can spread to humans and pets. Tonight in Portland, a chance to pay respects to the late civil rights leader, Reverend Dr. T. Allen Bethel. He passed away last week. There was a public viewing tonight at the Maranatha Church in Northeast Portland, where he was a pastor for decades. He was influential in working against gang and gun violence, as well as speaking out on police brutality. I think his shoes will be very difficult to fill, but um, he definitely planted a lot of seeds into a lot of people in the community, and I think we're gonna see um, people step up as a result. There will be a celebration of life for Reverend Bethel tomorrow, but it's invite only. However, the church will stream it live on its Facebook page.